Where does manipulation come into that? Manipulation? Mm. And manipulation at the soul level or an intellectual level? Because <laughs> there are just two different types, really, isn't there? Like, sometimes we know we're manipulating someone else at the intellectual level, don't we? Like, sometimes we know that, oh, um, you know, I want them to do something for me, so I do something for them that will cause them to feel like they're guilty if they don't do something for me. You know, things like that. You know, we, we often plan these kind of things in our mind, right? Um, the real manipulation occurs at the soul level that most people, almost all people, are not aware of. Then that is where the crap's in the middle of the floor, and I'm skirting around your crap so that you skirt around mine. So we're making, we're actually making a soul choice together. That if I avoid your stuff, you'll avoid my stuff, and we'll all get along fine. Sounds equitable, right? Yeah. And, and it's very much manipulation. Yeah. And so what I find is when I start talking truth to people, a lot of people do respond angrily. And the reason why they respond angrily is because it exposes their own soul desire for manipulation. And a lot of people don't want to see themselves as they truly are. They feel judged at that point. And then they get angry. So we had a discussion, interestingly enough, uh, Qualities of Divine Truth. It's a DVD that uh, has been produced recently. Because there was, a, there was a hundred, close to 100 people in the audience. And I was talking about the qualities of divine truth. And I mentioned something about what I had to do in terms of living in truth. One of the things I said to the audience was that if you love truth, you will actually live in truth 100% of the time. You will say the exact truth that you feel 100% of the time in all situations. Now, obviously that triggers a lot of people around you. No? So, so let's say you go up to someone and shake their hand and... and Sometimes, and this has happened already with some of you, I've, I've given you a hug or something, you say, boy, you're feeling really sad, <laughs> right? Or something like that, straight away. Imagine that, the first time you meet somebody, the first thing they say to you is, you're feeling really sad, or, or you're feeling quite angry, or you're feeling like whatever, or right, this is what I'm feeling from you. Right? Now, the beauty of that is it straight away puts the transaction, instead of being this surface level intellectual thing going on, straight away the transaction becomes soul to soul. I had a young fellow come out to visit me a few weeks ago. He said he wants to be my friend. So I sat him down and I said to him that, uh, that I want to know the real him and not the fake him. And he'd come out just to present to me the fake him. And I didn't want that. I wanted to know the real him. So I, talk, I started talking a bit about the real him, about what I could feel was really going on within him. Within about an hour of our discussion, he was going to get quite upset, and I suggested that, you know, he perhaps go off and just have a think about it, and he was getting angry and upset. And what was happening was, my statements to him were triggering a lot of his emotions with his dad, and he was starting to really feel those emotions. Now, after a day of that, he got so upset that I had to say, you need to go home. Right? But, can I just say before you go home, I want to get to know the real you, and I love you, and I want to get to know the real you, and when you're ready to let me know the real you, please come back. And I wasn't manipulating him. So manipulating him would have been doing what? Buying into his game. Buying into the game, yeah. Buying into the game. So, you, you see, the truth is that there, many of us know what another person's emotional injuries are, right? Because there's a pro common problem we all have, and that is we can see everyone else's emotional injuries except their own. <laughs> right? So what we do is we, we, then, we then sometimes go into the state of manipulating those emotional injuries for our own benefit. You follow me? So... If you, let me give you an example. If we know somebody is angry, an angry person, what do most of you generally do if you know somebody is just a generally angry person? What do you do? Nice to them. You try to be nice to them. What do they need? The opposite. They need <laughs> they need to actually be told they're actually quite angry and I'm not going to bend to you because you know you're, what you're doing is not nice. But you know what most of us finish up doing is we start saying to them the opposite. We start kowtowing, or I suppose you could call the, the term 
to the therapy. Yeah, or they get avoided. Or they get avoided. Yeah, well, yeah. But we either, usually we either avoid them completely, which is not loving in itself, or we go down the track of placating them, making them calm down by our actions, which is not being loving either. So why do we do that? Make more comfortable for ourselves. Exactly. 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 What we're avoiding is an emotion within ourselves. Can you see that? So every time we try to manipulate somebody or something in a situation from a soul level, we're actually avoiding an emotion within ourselves. It's really quite that simple. Yeah, so we act selfishly, fundamentally. Fundamentally, we're acting selfishly, which is not harmonious with love. And we need to allow ourselves to look at why. So, like, there's been many times where I've gotten into a situation of, of placating an angry person. So now I generally don't do that. Now what I say is, you're a very, very angry person. <laughs> and the truth is that I don't want to spend much time in your company while you're angry. Do you want to deal with what's underneath? Because I could talk about that with you. That'd be great. I'd love to do that. What happens when you do that? I've been in a situation where I've done that, mm -hmm. and it's caused confrontation. And you keep giving love and sending love, but they don't want that back. Do you just, are you best to avoid it? Well, there's two things happening, firstly. Firstly, there's an emotion in you that's attracted this unloving behaviour on their part. Mm. So what I've had to do myself is I've had to go into myself and say, all right, what's the emotion being triggered in me? Ah, it's this feeling in me that I have to actually make them feel better. So I'm feeling responsible. Now, I had to go right into some childhood issues and cry about all those issues, right, firstly. Once I did that, many of these angry people never even saw me again. And I didn't have to say anything to them at all. They just did not see me again. I had a period of uh, my time over the last five years, you know, saying that Jesus causes lots of different issues, mostly with other people. <laughs> And one thing that happened was that uh, sometimes there would be a lot of women coming along to groups. Like on, Sunday, uh, on Friday night, I think there were only five men there and the rest, you know, 30 or so, were women, right? So many of them again go home to their mates, to their partners, <coughs> and start talking about all these wonderful things that they feel so enthusiastic about. And then they start connecting to some emotions and their partners are not too impressed, right? Because their partner sees you change. And because I've, uh, many, my, my contact details are pretty easy to find out, so I often would get very abusive phone calls from men. Uh, mm -hmm. This went on for an early year where I'd have men ringing me up, telling, swearing and cursing at me and telling me they'd kill me if they saw me and, and like really violent, really violent responses right, from these men. Uh, I can understand why the women are so afraid of them. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and they just went on and on and on like that. They were writing letters to me. And I, 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 because my itinerary is pretty easily known as well, I would go to a new place and already there'd be a letter waiting for me there. Like, with all this swearing in it and I'm going to kill you and all this like, threatening stuff as well, right? So this happened. This went on going for four or five months. And, uh, and typical me, like I do with most things, is I avoid it for as long as possible. <laughs> do you do that too? <laughs> anyway, what I decided to do was just, um, the one time, it, well, I, I picked up the phone and answered one to this man and he just went off and swearing and saying how he's going to murder me if he, if he saw, you know, if I saw his family again. And, and mind you, he was a divorced man and he was talking about his divorced family, ironically. Right? So he wasn't even a part of the family that he was actually bringing me up about. And, and, um, and he was just swearing and abusive and, and just... And anyway, I just, I just said, look, I'm going to have to hang up and not hang up. And then, and then I just allowed myself to go into this fear that I was feeling about men being angry with me. And I went into some really deep causal things about my first century life group, you know, groups of people being, you know, angry with me to, to a life-threatening condition. And lots and lots of stuff came up for me. About, it took about a week of crying and, and just doing some fear processing as well, which is a sort of like your body just shaking and, ter and feeling terrified all the time. And uh, after I did all that, I never had a single phone call again. These men are still angry at me, <coughs> uh, but they don't call me anymore. 
and I don't get any letters anymore. And they still know where I am, they still know my phone number and everything. But I just don't get it anymore. So what I had to do, in answer to your question, is first deal with my own emotion. When somebody's angry, we have such a tendency to say, it's their problem. Right? But it's not just their problem. We attracted this issue. Now when it comes to their anger, yes, they are angry because they are denying the things within them. <coughs> but this idea of sending love, if I can address that. You can't send love. You are either love or you're not love. Right now. You are either love or not love. Your soul is your condition. It's the I am condition, if I can explain it like that. I am right now feeling what? That's what's getting sent. So if you are right now feeling afraid, when you're, you know, if someone's yelling at you and you're afraid, what are you right now? Do you love? No. no. You are afraid. Feel it. Release it. Then you'll be love. Right? If you try, you see, the problem with a lot of these new age philosophies is they teach you to do things here, from here, ignoring that actually the truth is always coming from here. And we need to get out of the fact that we can create things here, we need to get into the state where we create things here. Does that make sense? Into the state where we're creating things in the heart. So, right at that moment when somebody's angry at you, if I'm afraid, own that fear, go into that fear, remove yourself perhaps from the situation, go into the fear, put yourself back in your imagination, write, do whatever it takes to connect to that fear. It's a childhood fear and you need to release it. When you release it, the moment you release it, you will be loved with that person. 